Hi, I'm Celso from Guará.ca, and today I want to talk about how this little under $30 device was the biggest improvement on how I do mobile sculpting up to today. I'm also going to show you how I made this even better with the help of 3D printing, and I'm giving away the files so you can do that for free too. Okay, let's start by showing you why this is such a big deal to me. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 1. This was the very first device I had that was capable of uh, mobile sculpting. Uh, the way I, I would use was I had like this third party touch screen panel on the sides that had hotkeys and it was hit and miss, didn't work that great. This is very underpowered, the screen is very cramped. Uh, it was more like a toy than I actually, I, I never did any real work on this. Uh, I just pretty much played on the subway a little bit when I, to make time pass faster. So on an attempt to actually use this more professionally, I paired with this uh, macro pad here. And as much as it worked, like, come on, this is like, and like on the subway or on the train, like this wasn't a good, like it was too cramped. I couldn't hold this and this at the same time. So uh, I actually tried to make, stick this to the back here. And that's how I was, uh, how I was, I was trying to use but it, I gave up really fast. So a few years later, I ended up buying the Mobile Studio Pro from Wacom, and this thing is great. It's 17 inches, it's 4K, and the best part is physical keys. Like, after using this, I couldn't bring myself to buy an iPad because having the physical keys is such a, uh, so much better to work with. Even in Photoshop and 2D painting, but in sculpting especially, game changer. I actually use this every single day for four years on my commute back and forth from work. And even though this is really expensive, it was worth every single dollar I paid on it because I used it so much and I actually did professional work on here. I made a lot of freelance using this. Okay, so enter the iPad. This is such a great device. Sculpting on this is so nice with the touch screen and everything. With one exception, it doesn't have physical keys. and using especially ZBrush without physical keys, for me, it's a nightmare. Nomad Sculpt, somehow, it doesn't seem as bad, but for ZBrush, it, I just couldn't. Uh, with this little keyboard, it got a little better, uh, but the problem is I'm, I can only use this on a desk. I can't like just sit on the couch, on the car, on the train, and just use it. If I'm, and most of the time I'm using the iPad is on my lap, it's not on a desk. Uh, especially at home, because if I'm gonna sit on a desk, I might as well use my computer. So I already had this little keyboard, uh, hockey pad, macro pad, whatever it's called, from Huion. Uh, I used this with the desktop and it works great. So I thought, what if I find a way to attach this to the back of the iPad, and then I can use like, hold the iPad and, and use my back fingers uh, to hit some keys, right? So on an attempt to do that, I actually made a little, I 3D printed this little prototype where it fits, this fits perfectly in here. And then I put the iPad, it got a little big for the, for the iPad. Uh, this was the first version, but you can see how this would work, right? Uh, and the problem is like, for, for everything to fit, it got a little thick. But this actually works. So you, you can see that I'm pressing the buttons on the back and things are happening there. Uh, and I can actually use my thumb for that screen on the things here if I need. And I'm free to sculpt and I'm holding both at the same time. I actually like this solution. I haven't used in a while and by testing, I'm like, hmm, this is not as bad as I originally thought. And the good thing about this one is I have this little dial here and I'm using this for brush size. Um, anyways, this was a good solution, but I don't think it was as intuitive to use as the final solution that I got. Oh, and by the way, uh, the major downside of this is I'm not allowed, uh, I can't use my case with it. And if I made this around, the case would be way too big. But this is the cheapest and best solution I could find. 8-bit uh, Do Micro. And I was using like this, right? Holding the iPad and this at the same time. 
So like a couple fingers on the iPads on my lap and this. So I'm able to stabilize the iPad and use the micro hockeys. But with a little bit of help from a uh, GoPro quick release mount sticky thing that I glued on the case and a little bit of 3D printing, I made this little case for And this case just attaches on the back like any GoPro would to, to the quick release. And now it's there. I can't really take credit for the 3D model. This is combining two existing models made by other people. So I pretty much got this uh, ABDO microcontroller cover from Sleepyhead. And you can see here, you can like store it by flipping it or actually use it uh, on the direction that I'm using. And I pretty much just fused that together with uh, the proper amount of spacing uh, with this GoPro clip mount for uh, by Michael W257 in Maker World. I can actually like, I actually have physical keys my thumb still reaches any of those if I need to. I'm actually holding the whole iPad. It's not just like balancing with a couple fingers. I'm actually holding it. And I have physical keys and they work very nicely. And this is the best. This thing allowed me to add all the features that I missed from this huge Mobile Studio Pro to the lightweight, nimble, and way more powerful now iPad Pro. So I love it and let, let's just use it. So the way I've been using this is I set up my shift control out and space the same way as on the little wheel here. Uh, just in case if I don't bring this along for some reason and I want to scope, the muscle memory is kind of the same. Uh, and all the other buttons I'm setting up as I use. So right now, actually the C for color picking is not working for some reason. Uh, but let's say, Let's set a, a hockey for V in this case, where uh, V alternates between those two colors. So what I do is I go to the 8-bit Do app, uh, connect the thing, and when you press that, it just loads whatever hockey is already inside the, the controller for me to add it. So right now you see it's set up to C on the minus here, and I'm gonna switch that to V because C is not working. So if I sync to device, like I said, the hotkeys live inside the device. If I connect this to a computer and, and I use the same profile, it's gonna have the same uh, hotkeys. So I, I can actually set up for ZBrush here, bring it to the computer and use on the ZBrush the same way. So let me go back here. And now if I press this button, it's gonna alternate those two colors. And and then I can start painting. So let's go over all the hotkeys that I set. Like I mentioned, Control, Shift, Space, and Out are in the main menu here. Um, it is pretty easy to press Control, Shift together here uh, to use the, the masking 
I'm asking like the, the hiding selection kind of thing. But I did combine those two into this key here. I might change that in the future, but right now I actually like it. So I can, it's a little bit easier for me to press a single button than combining two. I have uh, perspective on and off. To the side here, symmetry. Let me go on his face. So symmetry on and off. The, the power button here that you, you can also set a hockey there, uh, it's frame, so it brings it closer. I don't have isolate selection here. I just do, uh, uh, I had isolate selection for uh, four finger tap, it's isolate selection. Right now I set up V for switching color on the minus and uh, I have brushes like B for brushes on the plus. Now, one one hockey that I'm really enjoying using is I have the gizmo, so the move tool, W for move, on the little trigger here. So I press here, the gizmo come up, and I have a duplicate selection, so it's Control Shift D on on the lower part here, so um, lower trigger. So if I do, I press that one, now it duplicated the, that tool and I'm using that quite a lot. So, because the way I've been modeling is actually squeezing a bunch of different spheres together instead of actually trying to sculpt everything out of a single sphere like I used to do. There is lots of tools that I use in ZBrush that are a little bit hard to find here. So in combination with using the little keypad here, I made another custom brush palette here. And all those brushes here, almost all of them, are actually on the main menu here, but this is locked, I can't move things around. So here I have an order that makes more sense for me. The brush that I use the most is the move brush and the clay build up. So they are the first two. The other thing that also is helping me a lot is, uh, especially for symmetry tools, it drives me crazy the way that uh, one is on, on the formations, uh, the other one is on, uh, geometry, so it's always spread across the software, the, all the symmetry tools. So when I press space bar here, if I go to the side, my first custom menu has all my symmetry tools. So mirror and weld is one of them. Uh, just mirror, so it flips one side to the other. Smart reseam, uh, if I have topology and I want to fix symmetry, that's the one I use. Alongside some other uh, poly group oriented tools to like delete hidden, all auto groups and group visible. It's more sub two oriented stuff. So merging and splitting. Uh, I might move those auto groups and group visible stuff here because it kind of goes together with this well. As I'm using the software, I'm reworking my hotkeys and uh, reworking the custom menus that I have here. By having these little keypads and actually customizing those tools, it made ZBrush for a pad actually like pretty good to use for me as before it was unbearable, especially comparing to Nomad Sculpt because Nomad Sculpt was way more intuitive without having to move things to the place that makes sense. It kind of makes sense out of the box.